Secrets Behind the Secrets by Lex. Warning, may contain content not suitable for children. Language, blood, violence, and some drug references. Prologue. My name is Jen Woods. I'm a forensics officer for the CPD, Chicago Police Department. These next few cases are some of my very own successes, catching perps and bringing them to justice. Now, since I am technically a police officer, I talk like one. So if you see any bolded words you don't know, feel free to look them up in the glossary at the end of each case. You are now going to endure cases of murder, deception, kidnapping, dead magicians, literal gold diggers, freaking awesome hostage situations in airports, and more. So be prepared for anything. Welcome to episode four of the A for Effort series, Secrets Behind the Secrets. Um, I'm Lex Fusco, and joining me is my wonderful husband, uh, Connor McKibben Vaughn. Hi. <laughs> Glad to be here. <laughs> I'm not super awake right now. That's fair. That's a great. Then that's a great time um, to to expose you to the the wonderful case we are about to dive into today. Um, I'm still excited. Oh, good. Okay, great. Um, so this is case four. Abracadabra. He's dead. It's really joyful. It is. death. There are two exclamation points in, in the, uh, in the title here. Yeah, it's too excited. He's too excited about that. Yeah, it's fine. All right. And, uh, here we go. Abracadabra. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the great Klaus. A woman in a long red dress announced. I do have to point out that I believe the last two at least have started with just dialogue. There's no setting of the scene. Mm -mm. It's just... Oh, no, uh, yeah. Only the first one has done it. What? Not started with dialogue and actually set the scene. You know, it's not important to know what's going on. No, no, no. no. We just need it. We're diving (laughs) right in. Again. It speaks to everything about you just seeing this in your brain, yeah. Not realizing that <laughs> no one else can see what you see. And I think I think that's something that's like kind of important to to learn. Where I think actually a lot of first time writers do this. Where oh, absolutely, I used to do it too all the time. They, they they're writing exactly what they see in their head, and like I think that. It, first off, it took a lot of different drafts of a lot of different kind of writing to realize that that's not what you're supposed to do. And was, then yeah. I went into screenwriting, which is actually exactly what you're supposed to do. It was it, uh, for me. It was that I did. I did exactly this, which was just write what I saw mm-hmm. and not explain anything else. Mm-hmm. And then I went in the exact opposite when I was on my first set and I saw someone who didn't write things. That happened in a screenplay. Yeah. Then that's wrong. Well, no, they. <laughs> They wrote it the way that it was supposed to be written, but they didn't. Didn't it wasn't really a good director, mm-hmm. and so they kind of just let the DP shoot the script on their own, mm-hmm. and things just kind of weren't shot that needed to be shot, like close-ups and things like that, because they weren't in the script. So I meticulously wrote every single thing oh that was my God. because I saw that happen, and I saw the DP was just like, "We don't need a close-up because it doesn't say close-up." Of of thing of important things. So that happening. that actually just sounds like everyone was bad at their job there. A woman in a long red dress announced. Nick and I sat in the third row of the audience. The great Klaus was a great magician, evidently. He could disappear and then reappear before your next breath. He could pull his assistant out of a hat and more. The you great- had never seen a magic show at this point in your life. Had I had you? not. <laughs> <laughs> He's pulling an entire woman out of a hat, sir. That's not magic. That's witchcraft (laughs) those are the same things (laughs) it's not an illusion that's just straight up demonic entity um the great klaus the woman announced again but nothing happened also i'm pretty sure magicians just go by names now this is 2006 this is when like chris angel mind freak his name is still chris angel it absolutely is not all right we're gonna live google (laughs) we're gonna live google chris Hey, Phil Chris Angel. C R I S S A N G E L. Chris Angel. Oh, his name is Christopher Nicholas Saren. Yeah. Saren Tacos. Yeah, so sorry to destroy the, the magic for you there, doll. 
All right. Well, still, it's the first name and a last name. It's not <laughs> the great Chris. <laughs> the great Klaus. I was going. Chris I Angel. know. Um, nothing happened yet. A body, Klaus's, tumbled down from the balcony and landed on the stage with a nice hard thud. In all the confusion and panic, Nick and I made our way up to the stage. He's gone, Nick said. He didn't Wait, there's no <laughs> What? <laughs> it's just there's no oh my god, he's dead moment. It's just well back to work, I guess. We were at we were, we had a day off but And we were going to a nice magic show and um not oh it's not our day. We should call the real police who are working today. It's all right, let's let's just do this. <laughs> He's gone, Nick said. He didn't mean dead gone. He meant the body wasn't there. Where it landed, there was nil, zilch, nothing, not, nanya, zero. Just the black stage under our feet. That's, uh, wait. So they got out of their seats? Yeah, they got out of their seats and walked up on stage to check the body. That wasn't there. That wasn't there anymore. It's gone. But it wasn't there to begin with because as soon as it landed, it disappeared. So they should have been like, oh my god. Oh, wait, this is part of the act. Instead, they were like, oh, my God, he's dead. Where did he go? This is all part of the mystery. Meanwhile, the assistant is like, please get off the stage. This is part of the act. Go sit down. What are you doing up here? Why do you have guns out? Uh, I radioed for Paige to send in the cavalry and get Melch down here as you well. You always refer to the other cops as the, the cavalry. cavalry. Yeah. Why? Because um, it's a lot of them. Just it's imagine going, a horde of police officers. I just officers imagine a just horde descending of descending upon every crime it, it, scene. It's, it's just a, yeah, it's just a World War Z amount of police constantly in places. That's how they get everywhere so fast. They actually just travel like There's just it, packs it, of police <laughs> roaming around, yeah. like ready and waiting. Like, like come on, feral come on. dogs. Come yeah. on, I want to fight someone. Yeah, you've been to Chicago, you know. I haven't. Um, oh, okay. Then you don't know. See, you see, this all could be. This could all be a hundred percent accurate, and we couldn't confirm nor just deny. For this one terrible city. Yeah, Chicago. You're probably very nice, but this version <laughs> of you is terrible and a nightmare. I'm so sorry. I radioed for Paige to send in the cavalry and get Melch down here as well. How can you examine a body without a body? I don't know. It would take a magician to do that. How not funny was that? That's a question that Jen asked on the page. Oh, not like a... That's not dialogue? Nope. That's just her that's just, musing yep. to herself. Yep. Hmm. The CPD filled the auditorium. Wait, they still think it's a real murder? It is a real murder. But he disappeared. That's absolutely not a real murder. That is someone who's doing a thing like, oh, Jesus. Remember, we were just at a magic, sh magic show like a month ago, and a boy flipped and fucked it up and just landed hard on his back. Everyone, ooh, but assumed it was part of the act. They didn't go, oh, my God, get a call an ambulance. <laughs> Although, in that kid's defense, he was like Buster Keaton in it up, and he was just like all over the place. And he got right back up. He he, he did great things. He was This man disappeared instantly. I would be like, oh, it's he's a magician. It's, it's magic. Um, Not, oh, God, someone made a body disappear. The, a different magician. Oh, my God. The CPD filled the auditorium, which didn't exactly calm the tenants any more than they were. Nick and I were on the stage and Ashlyn this deposited... This implies it all happened within like a minute, by the way. Yes, and also they filled the auditorium. I told you, it's just a horde of cops. Nick and I were on the stage and Ashlyn deposited our kits on the stage. Thanks, Ash, I what said. What happened to her always keeping her kit with, kit her? with her? It's her day off. Evidently not, because that's <laughs> not... <laughs> no problemo, boss, Ashlyn smirked. I slipped my gloves and Nick repeated the action. Baloof! A loud slam emerged from the backstage. There's a lot to unpack there. First off, <laughs> you missed a word. I definitely missed a word. And then baloof. Baloof. As in... A loud slam. That's the noise that it makes? Yep. I'll go check it out, Nick said, and walked backstage with his gun raised. Jen, get back here, Nick yelled from the back. I followed after him and saw what he was talking about. Nick was holding up the body of our disappearing DB, and I ran over to help him. I'll go up, I said. We dropped the body and I walked up the winding staircase to the balcony. I looked around a bit and shined my flashlight up and down the thin metal balcony. I peered over the side of the balcony and noticed... You're saying the word balcony way too much. <laughs> well, it's probably because she's going to fall off the balcony. I don't know. I just feel that in my bones. Um, I peered over the side of the balcony and I noticed I was very high up off the ground. I'm not a big fan of heights. A few years back, a suspect threw me down a few flights of stairs since I... Tr a few flights? <laughs> a few and you're fine? Here's my thing. 
stairs wouldn't contribute to a fear of heights, I don't think. Eh, I mean, I can understand phobias appearing for different reasons like that. I can, I can give it that to her, but just the whole, like... <laughs> Everything else, though, absolutely it not. Was, no, it was like, uh, you know, it was because the perp threw me down a fl- few flights of stairs. That's all. Not, oh, you know, just heights are fucking terrifying. terrifying. Um, also, I'm on a rickety balcony that a dead body just fell from. <laughs> Since then, I tried to avoid going up as much as possible. I continued my exhibition, and then a hand lay on my shoulder. I hit the assailant in the chest, and as I spun around to deliver another blow, when my poor partner on the floor deflected the kick. Damn, Jen, if this is about something I did, I'm sorry, Nick joked. Nick, you should absolutely be, like, calling yourself out. (laughs) You know that that you heard a noise, and that a body just dropped. No, it's nothing. I'm going to follow up with Jack from last episode. <laughs> Nick is still being like bad at his job. Jen is just abusive and aggressive, but Nick is actively just bad at bad. what he does. <laughs> no, it's nothing. It's just I get a little jumpy when it involves heights. I apologize. No, it's because a body fell from the balcony <laughs> and you know someone is up here. And, and Nick snuck up behind you and grabbed you. <laughs> um, it's cool. What did you get? He asked. Other than the creeps, I joked. Right there with you, Nick replied. What is going on? So, uh, we're actually now in an episode of Scooby Doo. Like the creep? What's the creep? They didn't find anybody. They didn't. W- what'd you get? The creeps? L- Are like, creeps not people? Like creepy people? No, like you're giving me the creeps. You're freaking oh. me out. Oh, that's. Why does Nick have them? Because he's a bad cop and he's <laughs> afraid of everything? I don't know. Okay. Well. Nothing really. I was not a cop. <laughs> Neither of these people are cops. They should not have weapons. <laughs> well, nothing really. No blood spatter or unusual weapons, I finished. We continued forward, but found nothing except a creepy locked door. Darn, locked, I groaned. Are they still up above? Yep. There's just a door ha- chilling? Yep. Not for long. We'll bust it down eventually, Nick returned. We walked back down the steps and met Melch and his lackeys down I at like, the stage. I'm going to be honest. I like... thought he was going to shoot the lock. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? That is such a fair assessment and uh, such a fair assessment. And I'm sorry that that didn't happen. I'm sorry to have disappointed you. I'm sorry to have disappointed our listeners. Yeah. Melch is a psychopath. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Not for long, but we'll bust it down eventually. Nick returned. We walked back down the steps and met Melch and his lackeys down at the stage. Hey, COD, Nick asked. Stab wounds to the chest obliterated the heart. Think of the heart as a jello mold, and you shoved an M80 into it, Melch reported. There's that uh, M80s again. You really like cherry bombs. Yeah. Don't get copyright strict. For that. <laughs> That's why I whispered it. Um, that is so not a picture I wanted in my head, Nick grimaced. Hey, Nick, wasn't the first act the sword in a box? I asked. Yeah, you think he was stabbed by the sword he uses in the show? That would be ironic, he replied. I mean, kind of, but not really. It more just be... Funny? <laughs> a coincidence? Maybe, but I won't be able to figure it out in this dress and shoes, I said. Nick agreed. He was wearing a tuxedo. Oh, good to know. <laughs> good. I now picture them very differently than I was. I know. <laughs> I'm glad we, we waited until now <laughs> to, to get this information. I was picturing them just sitting in the audience in their uniforms. They don't need uniforms. They're not cops. <laughs> but just sitting there like, mm-hmm, this is our only clothes that we wear. <laughs> <laughs> we wear the same outfit every day. We walked out to the parking lot next to our cars. Our two Vipers sat next to each other awaiting our arrival. I you really thought that was so fucking cool. So fucking cool. I got dressed in a black long sleeve shirt and pulled on a pair of jeans. Did you just get changed in the middle of a no, parking lot? She got. Cha- I, I'm 94% sure she got changed in her car. We just didn't get the sentence that said she got in her car to get changed Uh, either way weird she's committed to her work i then slipped on my black vans and grabbed my kit from the trunk i tossed the dress i was wearing into the back seat and sat on top of the trunk awaiting for nick all right let's go nick said when he emerged from the side of his car he straightened out his shirt and picked up his case nick placed the tuxedo on top of his trunk as he looked for his keys mick is that blood i asked pointing out the rather large blood stain on the tuxedo oh crap yeah and this is really mine he exclaimed looking for any apparent injuries i think it was dripped onto your tux i said examining the blood 
Well, I'm fine, Nick said. We concluded that the blood was from the stage, and we went back into the deserted theater. <laughs> we walked down the vacant aisles and stepped in onto the stage. Ah, damn, I think I know where the blood came from now, Nick said. Klaus hung from the very ceiling of the stage. Wait. That's right, Klaus. I picked up my phone. Melch, did you take the body away from the scene? I asked. Very hopeful the answer was no, but highly doubted he would hang the body from the ceiling. Yeah, I'm cutting him open right now. Why? He replied. So there's two of him. The prestige. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, and I can't tell if that's actually correct. Oh, uh, it is. That is so not what I wanted you to say. Get down here as soon as you can. We have another body, and it's pretty familiar, I said, and then hung up. That's not Klaus. It can't be, I clarified. We walked up to the balcony, and then Nick climbed a ladder, which led up to a platform by the body. He lowered the body down by the rope that was supporting it and walked back over to the ladder. Okay, this is weird. This is a really great look-alike Klaus, You're I said. You have to wait for other people before you just move bodies. You have to take pictures. They didn't take any pictures this time. I know. They, they normally do. All they do is take pictures. Nick continued to climb down the ladder, and I looked over the body with my flashlight. Nick, I have blood on the victim's hands, shirt, and pants. Another stab wound. I think that the perp thought this was Klaus and killed him by accident. When the real Klaus came around, he ended up a pincushion, too. I finished. Why would you assume that when this was the second body found? Why wouldn't you assume that he killed the real Klaus first? And then panicked, hung him. Uh, panicked and saw... Just, why are you assuming that the second body found was the first one killed? <laughs> That's, you know what? Great questions. Great questions. I could roll with that. Hey, I'm going down on the stage to meet Melch. You okay up here, he asked. How is he already back? How is he already... How did he already left the crime scene... Brought the body back to autopsy and was already cutting it open in the time it took Jen and Nick to get changed in their cars. Your question is more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but there's certain things we've come to just accept. <laughs> One is that time in this reality. is nothing. <laughs> um, okay. Um, you okay up here? He asked. No, but I'll stay. Hey, could you hand me the blood spray? I replied. Nick tossed me the clear... You see the blood. You don't need the blood spray. Well, I want to confirm that it's blood and not paint. Is that really what it says? No, but I'm sure that that was the line of reasoning. Nick tossed me the clear spray bottle and then headed down to the stage below. Bump. I heard a sound from behind that creepy door. I walked over to it and turned the knob. It was no longer locked. Hello? I called. The darkness that was inside the room was... Very, well, very, very dark. Is that what it says? That's what it says. Descriptions. I mean, she at least admits that she's like, I got nothing to say. It's dark and it's, it's really fucking dark. It's now. dark. I don't know how to make this flowery for you people <laughs> inside my head. Isn't this like her journal? I, you know what? I have no idea. Like the, the, I have not a clue as to why this is in first person. The opening implies that it's her journal. He's like, hi, I'm Jen Woods, and these are just a few of the cases that I'm using on. By the way, there's a glossary, because I know someone's reading this. That's true. <laughs> okay, okay, things are making less sense. <laughs> Maybe this is her memoir. Maybe she's <laughs> this writing is her this, deathbed confession. Maybe she's writing this going in, and now... To finally kill myself because <laughs> I've realized how terrible I am. <laughs> a woman turned a switch and very little light filled the room. She was standing in the middle of it and had a bloody sword in her hand. I raised my pistol and aimed it at the woman. Chicago Crime Lab, put the sword down and put your hands on your head, I ordered. The lady dropped the sword and walked forward with her hands on top of her hair. When she stepped out of the room, I cuffed her. Hey, Nick, I got our killer, I yelled. He took a picture of a stage line on the stage. Oh, he's just back now? No, he's down, he's down on the stage still. Oh. He took a picture of a strange line on the stage. That's great. I wish all of our cases could be this easy, he returned. I turned around and the woman giggled. Not very serial killer-like at all. She ran forward and... Killing two people is not a serial killer make. No, but I, th I, think, I think the implication here was that it was really creepy... 
Oh, which I, is not not a correct way to have said that. But I thought she was giggling like in an extreme way. I was like, it's not a serial killer at all. Literally, like, oh, she's really like chill about this. <laughs> like, <laughs> she ran forward and headbutted me off the balcony. Jen, Nick screamed. I grabbed the bar on the bottom of the edge of the balcony and held on as best I could. The suspect peered over the side at me, and I gave her a classic Jen Woods glare. Then she did Oh, you know, those things we've been seeing all, all, all the, time. the time. Then she did something unexpected. She jumped off the balcony and landed onto the stage below. Nick, if you could hurry, that would be great. I yelled. No, Nick, you're on the floor with her. Shoot her and then help her. Do one thing correct. <laughs> I think Jen is asking for help, though. I think she's like, fuck the woman who just jumped off the stage. Listen. That woman's dead. <laughs> what? I'm pretty sure. No, it sounded like she just parkoured her way down. Just jumped off and landed and was like, fuck you guys, and took off running. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, mm. she just killed herself? I think so. Okay, let's continue then. Nick, if you could hurry, that would be great, I yelled. He scrambled to look for something that would break my fall. Found something. It was a mattress in the back. He dragged it out just as my arms gave. I fell on top of the mattress. There was an ellipsis to create some tension, just in case we thought she was going to fall to her death. I didn't, because I'm pretty sure that a fall at that height would only cripple someone. Mm. Stop reading ahead. Okay. <laughs> Jen, Nick screeched and ran over to me. I rolled onto my back and gazed at the pretty dancing lights on the ceiling above. Jen, can you hear me? Nick asked. He held me in his arms as he called a bus. I really hate heights, I mumbled. Then I went Betty by. <laughs> I can't. You 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 use phrases <laughs> that I think you think other people use a lot, despite having never heard another person use them. Mm, fair. That's a fair assessment. And I can't follow your logic behind it. <laughs> I Logic can't, I can't behind into, any of this? I can't get into the mind of an 11 year old. <laughs> Nick took off his sweatshirt and put it behind my head. He pulled the handkerchief I carried in my pocket and dabbed it against the wonderful cut I had developed on my forehead. Another thing that's never been mentioned before the handkerchief. That also, she keeps. I don't know where any of these injuries came from. She landed on a relatively soft surface. And you haven't said how far the drop was because I'm assuming like a balcony at a thing like this is probably only. Maybe 20 or 30 feet. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Okay. This actually just gets worse. Are you ready? No. Okay. <laughs> Jen, hang in there. Nick soothed. When I finally woke up, instead of soothing dancing lights, it was an annoying fluorescent one. Nick, I asked. What? Nick yelped. Oh, hey, Jen. How are you feeling? Nick greeted, rubbing the sleep from his eye. Wait, are they not? We still have not figured out where we are. <laughs> where are they now? They're not, it doesn't sound like they're in the... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where they are. Are they uh, in a hospital? Maybe. Fluorescent lights sound hospital. Hospitally. Like I was tossed off a balcony by a suspect and then landed on her, I moaned. Wait, what? That's... He landed... Did she... On the woman? Well, the doctor says that you're lucky enough to be alive. He thought you wouldn't even wake up, but it was just a bunch of crap, Nick joked. what I miss? I asked. Well, after you fell, they wanted to keep you here for a little while, but I couldn't see you. So I headed to the lab to blow off some steam, Nick reported as he sat on the bed with me. Also, it's my job. Caring about you is not my job. <laughs> my job is to catch the criminals. <laughs> so I went to go do my job. Jason and Klaus Mayberry. These guys are fraternal twins. That's why they look so much alike. But we can tell the difference between DNA a bit. We can also visually see nope. who's who. <laughs> We can also visually see who's who. They also have no criminal records. The suspect that pushed you over the balcony and killed our guys was Kiki Malone. I have no idea where parents get these names for their kids. Oh, I almost forgot. I drove your car back to your house, Nick said. He handed me the case file. Why is that we, last bit important? I don't know, but we also still don't know if Kiki's alive or not. Okay. I'm pretty sure 11-year-old you was like, oh no, her car's going to be at that... Her viper. Her precious, precious viper. It's going to be stuck at that auditorium. Uh, I don't know where this Theater? magician... I don't know. Like, it could have been a child's musician... Uh, a child's magician show. It could have been a... <laughs> um, could have been a talent show. Okay. 
He handed me the case file. That does explain how he could move from one place to another so fast, I concluded. It keeps getting weird. The fall didn't kill Kiki, and COD was actually asphyxiation. Oh, okay, so she is dead. And she is asphyxiated. But they saw her die. Um, she sh- I, you know what? You know what I think happened? I think she jumped off the balcony expecting to kill herself, and she choked on this next bit. She shoved this down her throat before she jumped off the balcony, Nick continued. He placed pictures of the contents on the bed before me. Plus the blood on the second Klaus's hands, by the way, was the real Klaus, was Jason's blood. And you can't get blood on yourself if you're first. So this is what I think happened. Kiki killed Jason by mistake, thinking it was Klaus. So this is what I think happened. Kiki killed Jane. Yes, please explain it to me because I am so goddamn lost. <laughs> So this is what I think happened. Kiki killed Jason by mistake, thinking it was Klaus, which means she had to have access to the swords. She goes into the room on the balcony, which turned out to be a dressing room, and ran Jason through. Why would a dressing room be on the balcony level? Um, Rational reason, especially if their whole act was the fact that there were two of them, they'd want to stay as far away from the audience as possible. Right, um, irrational right. reason, I just needed an excuse to have a conflict on top of the stage. Fair. Sounds like that one's more likely, especially for... Oh, absolutely. What Whatever this has become. Yes. Um, And ran Jason through. When she discovers it's not Klaus, she tosses him over the edge, Nick thought. How did the body disappear, I asked. I figured that one out, but it hurt. Remember that irregular groove pattern on the stage? Well, I dropped my kit on top of it, and it opened up a trap door. Oh my gosh, trap doors and magician shows? No way! No way! I feel like you, of all people, should have known that, crime lab. <laughs> when I fell down through it, a metal strap scooped me back and dumped me where we found the body. The lever got them backstage faster so the other one could appear, while the other got ready for the next trick, Nick finished. Okay, but how did Klaus get Jason's blood on him if Kiki immediately dumped him after she killed him? I questioned. some freaky shit. Don't worry about it. (laughs) I questioned. Don't kink shame. I don't know who I'm implying is in a relationship, by the way. It could be the brothers. It could be (laughs) Kiki and either one of them. Um... Maybe this'll run better, I began. So she runs Jason through, and then Klaus walks in. Now she's seeing double, which allowed her to discover that it wasn't in fact Klaus. So Klaus rushes over to his brother, cradles him. Then Kiki runs Klaus through as well. Everything is spinning out of control. So she drags the body over to the balcony. That would have to tire her out, so she goes back into the dressing room. She locks the door so no one can come in and rests a second. She hears us on the other side of the door and waits for us to leave, then puts the body on the platform over the balcony. We stood under it for a second before we got changed, which explains the blood. But why wouldn't she leave? I questioned. My head started to hurt. Because she's dumb. (laughs) Everyone here is dumb. (laughs) Jen, you sure you want to do this? Perhaps you should get some sleep, Nick wondered. Don't baby me. In fact, help me up, I ordered, sitting up in my bed. Oh, they are both just so mean to each other when they're uh, uh, injured. (laughs) No, Nick sneered. He's a nest. They're so mean. (laughs) Fine, I'll do it myself, I said stubbornly. I got out of the bed and landed in the wheelchair next to me. I wheeled into the bathroom and got changed. Nick watched in astonishment as I continued to wheel toward the door. By the by, I was easier to stop than Nick. I said, this is my second time saying by the by. You must have heard it somewhere and you were like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. This is such a cool way of saying yeah. by the way. Yeah. And you know what the worst part is? The first time that we said by the by, Mikus was saying it and I had shit on him for his poor grammar. You are staying here. I think I was even pushing it when I told you about the case. Take a few days off, Nick complained. Oh my God. A rational thought from him? <laughs> Holy God. What's happening? Do you want me to run you over? I joked. Fine, but you stay in the chair, Nick caved. I wasn't about to argue. On the fact my entire right side was killing me. Nick wheeled me out and into the parking lot. I got up out of the chair and into the back seat. Something's off. How is Is this- Is there a back seat and a viper? Yes. I I don't know what they look like. You just thought they were cool? (laughs) I just thought they were cool. I just, it's fine. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Um, 
There is no back seat. Oh no! I'm looking at it right now. It's a coop. It's a. I hate coops. Oh, that's such a shame. What did you think this was? Probably a Challenger, to be entirely honest. Or a Charger. Yeah. Either one of those. Oh God! Like I was gonna say, Vipers are like sports cars. <laughs> they don't have back seats. <laughs> Um, oh my god! <laughs> Did you just think the word Viper was cool? So cool! Like you just thought Snake, awesome driving, so fucking Rrr. badass. It starts with a V. Fuck yes. Okay, something's off. How is this Kiki person? Was she's dead now? Okay, it gets worse. The whole sentence is fucked up. Something's off. How is this Kiki person fit into the magician's background? Nick questioned. Wasn't she the? Is she not the assistant? I'm just assuming that the woman who is speaking at the beginning is Kiki. You know what? That's a fair assessment. And yet, here we are. Nick, the second body was hung on the ceiling. How could she have possibly gotten him up there? I inquired. I looked closer to the photo of the body. Nick, go to the lab. I think I have an idea. I said. What? He asked. I'm going to kill you. I smiled. Oh, goody. Nick smirked. Don't worry. I've killed him plenty of times. There's such a look of befuddlement on my face right now. I cannot begin to explain how confused I am. First off, didn't they already agree that the body was already up on the balcony? That's how she got him up there? Here, Here's my confusion. Um, both Jen and Nick posed pretty, like, rational like assessments of the scene. And then as soon as they got in the car, they went, actually, mm. Oh yeah. For some reason she was in the, the back. Things. She was in the non-existent backseat of the Viper. <laughs> and for some reason just was again, looking at the pictures and was like, you know, that whole theory we put out there earlier. None of it makes sense. My bad coach. We drove to the lab and everyone babied me. Those jerks. When we finally got to the sim- uh, human caring fucking <laughs> pussies, drug th- drug me like someone who really cares. Why can't they just goddamn do their jobs and hate everyone who's not a cop like me? But they also can't care about people who are cops. We just gotta be steely eyed and grim. Snarky and snarky. Oh yeah, not grim, snarky. <laughs> Which is a different kind of grim because it implies I don't care about anything, but I'm also smarter than you. <laughs> when we finally got to the simulation room, I called Sarah in. Hey. The sh- what? The simulation room. Now, this didn't exist in CSI. This was an invention of... No, no. Of this is the danger room from X-Men or... <laughs> what? <laughs> the holodeck from Star Trek. Mm, mayhaps. Um, that's what you're. That's what it sounds like. You're implying. I, <laughs> I called Sarah in. Hey, she smiled. Sarah, I began and handed her the same size and weight sword that killed Dalton. Who the fuck is Dalton? I'm gonna guess that it was Jason, but I just changed the name halfway through. So where the fuck did she get a replica sword? Um, they're in the simulation room. Uh, it just conjures objects. No, that you so need. it is the danger room. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's just bad writing. Um. It's the danger room. Uh, <laughs> you saw the 90s X-Men comic. The <laughs> X-Men, <laughs> you saw the 90s <laughs> X-Men cartoon and you were like, that just makes sense to me. <laughs> but this one was retractable, so she didn't really kill Nick. So it's not actually even a replica. She just found a... A sword. A, 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 a prop sword that yeah. happened to be the exact replica of yeah. the one. Uh, you are almost the same height and weight of Kiki Malone, our suspect, and Nick is the same as Jason. So you it look is. Like it her was too. Jason. <laughs> and you, you smell like her. Oh my God, you're Kiki. You're Kiki Malone. You're going to stab him, drag him over. I completely expect that to be a like a twist in one of these episodes. Is that someone that they was that was on their team just turns out to not be who they say they were, even though they've been working with them for decades, despite all being in their twenties. <laughs> that would have been so cool. Um. You're going to stab him, drag him over to here, and push him over the balcony rail replica that they just have, by the way. Again, <laughs> this has all just been conjured through nanobots or <laughs> it's a hellscape. AR? Um, the simulation room just creates what you want. 
I said, pointing it's out the, the directions. The holodeck. Okay, Sarah said. Nick sat in the dressing room chair and pretended he was dabbing on powder. What? I have to embrace the role, he joked dramatically. Sarah came up behind him and stabbed him in the back. Nick died instantly. Sarah stabbed him again because Jason's twin was stabbed as well, I ordered. So she stabbed Nick again. She pretended to push Klaus's body away and dragged Nick over to the balcony, but she couldn't lift up the dead weight. So they're just playing pretend right now. Yes. For no reason. No, I think they're. Tr- I think uh, Jen is trying to prove the fact that her theory isn't correct. She's trying to disprove herself. <laughs> yes. But also, it's like you're the same size and weight of Kiki Malone. Let's see if you can lift it. And meanwhile, Kiki Malone is like lifting and super <laughs> strong. So fucking jacked. But she looks the same. So that you can't judge a person's strength because someone who is similarly built just happens to look like them. Yeah, you don't know if Kiki's taking those bone strengtheners. <laughs> um, I can't push him over. They obviously, exist. <laughs> no, I sh- I shouldn't be surprised that there is a holodeck because <laughs> already super soldier drugs just exist and are like commonplace enough where people are like, yeah, that's a thing. They're illegal, but they're a thing. <laughs> I can't push him over. She frowned and dropped Nick. Ow! Hey, I'm not really dead here. He yelped. There was someone else helping her. Nick concluded as he stretched. Bzz, bzz. Nick's cell phone vibrated. Cragen, he answered. Nick, 419 at the theater, Page informed. On our way, Nick replied. Jen, that theater is cursed. We have another body, Nick repeated. Thanks for the help, Sarah, I said, and we left. We got out into the parking lot and got into the car. I like how you're nice enough for Jen to thank Sarah, but not nice enough to give Sarah a line. Nick turned on the ignition and spun the car around in the direction of the theater. When we pulled up into the lot, Paige, a few squad cars, and an ambulance awaited. Paige, what's up? Nick yelled as he exited the car. Another body was found. Jasmine Malone. He, he walks in. What's going on? <laughs> right here, Nick. Jesus. You don't have to shout. There's no noise. Paige replied grimly. I rolled toward the entrance and opened up the door. Ashlyn greeted me there. Oh, wait. No. It, sorry. Ashlyn greeted me at there. That's what it says. I mean, what what sto- what chapter is this? Uh, four. four. This is case four. Okay, so this is when your, uh, this is when your attention to grammar started to just collapse because you were like just so into the story. Well, here here's actually a fun fact. So so the the. The copy that I'm reading is the third draft of this book. It blows me away that you had enough attention and care at 11. I was not socializing at all. I was watching television and sitting in a room writing this. I know, but (laughs) I, I had a similarly active imagination, but I just didn't have the patience to write it all down. I'm just talking like I'm... Thinking up stories, and then 20 minutes later, I'm forgetting them because I have moved on to the next story that is interesting me. Oh, okay. So it was just like, uh, the fact that you had the patience to write this out once, and then again, fixing it, and then Mm -hmm. a third time, fixing it further. Well, I also transcribed it from a composition book onto a computer. Jesus. So technically, this is the fourth draft, but Abracadabra, He's Dead was actually the second case. Then it was all that glitters. Then it was... She just kept thinking of new things and shoving them between them? I did. I thought of ironic sensitivity for this um, for this draft. And I put it in in the second one. Um, I don't know why, but that's what I did. <laughs> this is also the one that features other people more heavily. Like, Paige actually found a body and did something. Yeah. <laughs> also, I forget. Who's the chief? Paige. Oh. <laughs> Why does he behave like a lackey? Again, a word that should not be used in a police situation, but is constantly here. Uh, only when referring to Melch's people. Yeah, um, fucking subhuman garbage. All they do is carry my bodies and occasionally do scientific research for me. God, they're such idiots. idiots. They're my Igors. <laughs> Ashlyn greeted me there. Hey, boss, I got this if you're not up to it, she offered. Why does everyone think I'm not up to it? I questioned and wheeled down to the stage with the body. Oh, is Ashlyn just 
offering to do her job. Yes. I then realized I was in a wheelchair. The concussion I had was really making it hard to concentrate. She has a concussion? She should be resting. <laughs> the concussion I had was making it really hard to concentrate. Like watching daytime That's television. That's a casual converse, like a casual sentence to say where it's like... It gets, wait, it, it gets more casual. Let me finish it. The concussion I had was making it really hard to concentrate. Like watching daytime television. Wow, that's... What did you like? <laughs> um, CSI. That's it? Special Unit 2. Law and Order SVU. Okay, so... House. It makes sense why these people... It makes sense why these people only care about cops because that's all you cared about <laughs> for some reason. Um, but, I, but I was also watching Buffy and Angel, so, like, vampires were cool, too. Are you gonna? Are you? I had just gotten into Supernatural. Are you warning me that there are going to be vampires? There are no. There are no vampires in this. Um, I was in a wheelchair. Concussion. Nick followed in after me, case file in hand. I got up out of my chair and oh so gracefully fell. You don't just casually walk around with a case file. Here, let me help. Those are kept in the police station. It's got it's got information in it. He needs it. That's why you have a notebook. <laughs> no. Or a tablet. Here, let me help, he offered. I got it. So who's our DB? I asked, regaining my balance. You know, it's fucking Jasmine Mahoney or whatever. Jasmine Malone, age 29. She works for the Magic Twins. She's the assistant, Nick continued. Are there two sets of twins? Um. No. No. Okay. Uh, she's the assistant, Dick continued. We walked up the steps and onto the stage. Wow, he whispered. For on the stage Wait, was is the this the second time that they found, like someone died and they didn't contact Next of Kin? <laughs> I don't think they've ever contacted Next of Kin. They just I don't the, think they ever will. <laughs> they just they just find bodies. This is ours now. <laughs> we take we take and do what we need to. And then <laughs> Then the only reason why they contacted Greg Marshall's parents in the first one was to explain why they couldn't autopsy the not dead 12 year old. Um, no, actually, I also might be wrong. Jasmine also might be a twin, to, like, uh, based on the next couple sentences. Uh, wow, he whispered, for on the stage was the body of Jasmine Malone, but also the double of our balcony girl. What did you say Jumper's name was? I asked. Kiki Malone. It's the Vic's sister, he reported. Oh, no way. Really? (laughs) Wow. I'm really comfortable with the idea that Kiki didn't plan this murder on her own, I said. So you're thinking the boss offed Jasmine? Nick asked. What the fuck is the boss? Yeah, or Jasmine was the boss, I replied. You're just throwing words around. I know. Okay, I'll head back to the lab. You finish up here, I suggested. Sure, I'll meet you in the lounge in about an hour, Nick agreed. I walked back down the steps and out into the parking lot. I didn't have a car. I flipped out my sleek silver razor and dialed Melch. Isn't Melch here? He should be. To get the fucking body. Um, hey, Em, can you come pick me up? I begged. Be there in five, he replied and hung up. Sure. Yeah, I'm across town. <laughs> oh, wait, we've already established that this Chicago is six blocks wide. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Melch- and he is constantly just... On the move. <laughs> yeah. Melch pulled up. Hop in, Humpty Dumpty, he smirked. Ha, aren't you the next Dave Chappelle, I sneered. Ooh, that's <laughs> racism. <laughs> no, it's not. He's a comedian. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it have been more racist if I had called him a white comedian? No, the fact that you only attributed him to Dave Chappelle, I don't know. It was the only black comedian I knew at the time. And do you know why? That's that's on you for not educating your 11-year-old self. Because I loved the film Undercover Brother. What about Eddie Murphy? Hadn't you seen Shrek? Uh, yeah, but those people, those, those people weren't people. Maybe you should rephrase that. <laughs> no, I'm saying like they were animated. I had no idea who they were or what they looked like. Oh. Ha, huh, aren't you the next Dave Chappelle, I sneered. So, slow day at the morgue, I asked on our way. Yeah, my lackeys are dropping off your dead body as we speak, Melch retorted. Jesus, again, with, we just made fun of this. We sat in silence for the rest of the way. <laughs> Thanks, Em, I smiled and exited the car after pulling into the lab's parking lot. I walked into the lab and Claire... You Cla- really like... Uh, 
The way that you structure sentences sometimes is just like <laughs> structure. Like funny. Here's the here's the thing that's happening, but also this just happened right before it. <laughs> just so you're aware. Yeah. Because I just contradicted myself. Of we stayed in silence. Then I spoke. Oh, but this was after <laughs> we had already stopped. Just so you know. Um, I walked into the lab and Claire almost ran me over. Hey, I have something for you, Claire greeted. God, fucking Claire, always being helpful, but always being so in my way. <laughs> I'm going to be Jen's inner monologue now. Well, this is her inner monologue. I'm being her sub-ego. Okay. <laughs> her id? <laughs> yeah. Claire greeted. It's just always angry. Gotcha. She dragged me into the toxicology lab. Yeah, Claire, good to see you too, I joked. No time for proper salutations. Your perp, Kiki What? Mom- <laughs> there's no time. <laughs> there's no time for proper salutations, but there's enough time to use the word salutations. <laughs> You're goddamn right. No time for proper salutations. Your perp, Kiki Malone, was a walking drugstore. I found traces of lorazepam, horse tranquilizers, sanative, Valium, and antipsychotics. I don't think you spelled any of those right. <laughs> I don't think I spelled any of those right either. It's Valium, not Valum. I, Valium. That's not right. I know it's not right. <laughs> um, um, horse tranquilizers is fine because you didn't use the actual word. I don't know what sanative is. I don't either. I think you were trying to just say sedatives. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I was like, I, I'm pretty sure they said sanative. I'm not, pretty sure you I, thought uh, sedatives were an actual like brand of drug, not just a generic. A generic, but also sanative and antipsychotics. Oh, good. <laughs> what? By that's, the way, isn't that just lorazepam and Valium? <laughs> Why don't you say the other brand names of the drugs that are in our system? No, Valium's not an antipsychotic, is it? No, I know, but I've said two name brand medicines, and then I said antipsychotics, as if I didn't feel like listing the other medicines. I'm absolutely sure you didn't know any brand na- brand named antipsychotics, and again, as we've established, didn't look up anything. anything. Um, again, in my defense, the computer I was typing this on did not have internet. Um, really? Yeah. Well, evidently, they didn't work. Good job, Claire, I said, and headed down to the morgue. Hey, Jen, wait up. I'm not finished, Claire called. I turned around and waited for her to catch up to me. Yeah, I asked. Some of those meds weren't long-term. The Valium and anti-crazy meds were, and the others, on the other hand, were in doses suggested some weirdo mixed them all up together. If she hadn't jumped, she would have OD'd, Claire continued. But she swallowed something, right? We don't know what... Jen has seen a picture of it, but we haven't been told what the picture was of. I'm pretty sure that that if we had been told, we'd be like, "Oh, it's this." It's instantly. it. Yeah. And you were just like, "Shit, I can't reveal this." <laughs> really? Do you think you could find where the drugs came from? I asked. No, that is absolutely not my job. <laughs> yeah, with medication like this, the FDA treats them like number one priority. I can trace the batch's chemical markers to the original mix and where it was shipped and where it was delivered to. How Claire do you smiled. Have that? Um, well, she found them in the bloodstream, <laughs> so she has the chemical markers. You'd need the bottle. <clears throat> yeah. But unless, th- unless, and I'm going to give this to you. Okay. There were undigested pills in her stomach. Yeah, that was it. There we go. Yeah. Um, and even then, I don't know if the numbers <laughs> would actually be on the pills. Well, they're not numbers. She's using the chemical markers to. to what does see that mean? I don't know what what they're composed of. I'm assuming of, what that the ke- like what the chemical composition of the compound is. That means nothing. That means nothing. Hey, I need you to track all Valium. <laughs> so this is the FDA. What does that mean? <laughs> How did you get in here? Uh, yeah, but there had to have been thousands of medications just like those shipped a day. I frowned. Jen, 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 Jen. How I'm long? I'm magic. <laughs> How long have you known me? Claire inquired. Each batch has a specific thing in each batch, just in case they need to do a recall, a specific order of medications. That's not true. And again, that would be on the goddamn bottle. Claire said triumphantly. This is eleven-year-old you going. Nothing makes sense. I need an out. Please help me. (laughs) 
She walked away and I smiled. I continued my way down to the morgue. So, CODs? I asked. Long time no see, Meltz joked. Vic number one, Jason Mayberry. TOD, 8.59 p.m., and COD was a stab wound through the heart. The skin was ripped on the front, pointing outward, indicating he was stabbed in the back. No contusions, lacerations, or breakage, which means no struggle occurred, Melch continued. Vic number two, Klaus Mayberry. TOD, 9.27 p.m. COD was blunt force trauma to the back of the skull. The body had several bruises on the wrists and chest. He fought with his attackers, Melch began, but I interrupted. Attackers? Attackers, I asked. Wow. Wow, look at you. Yes, the I could be a cop. <laughs> yes, the bruises to the back and front suggest that a person was hitting him from the front and the back at the same time. Plus, not even Mike Tyson could have done this to a poor guy's body, Melch said, pointing to the visible rib on the second Vic. So why is there a stab wound if that didn't kill him, I asked. Well, the blood clotted. The stab occurred post-mortem. I do the how they died, not why did the weirdo kill them that way. That's your job, I continue. It's not. It's not your job, Jen. Your job is to gather the evidence so that the police officers can actually do it. I continue. And the fact that Melch doesn't know that makes me not trust him anymore. <laughs> okay, so two people were hitting him. Could it have been two women, I asked, thinking that the mastermind of the plot was actually Jasmine and her sister helped. And hopefully This is going to be how Melch reveals he's sexist and go, women can't hurt people. And hopefully Jasmine had just killed herself. Case closed. Not even if one of the women were on steroids. The first attacker was definitely a woman on the fact that the bruises are less on one side than the other. Plus, there's an indentation of a ring. But on the what other... What does that mean? Men can't wear rings and they can't be small? And they can't be pussies? Um, but on the other side, a guy beat the crap out of our magician. Melch finished. We walked over to the third body. Vic number three, Kiki Malone. TOD, 10.19 p.m. COD asphyxiation. Her left knuckle was fractured, proving that she was one of the attackers, Melch reported. It just proves that her hand was broken. She did jump off a balcony. Oh, <laughs> she jumped off a balcony. How can you tell which bone broke first, I questioned. Well, the bruising on the knuckle already began to heal before the others. Here are the contents that we pumped from the stomach, Melch said, handing me a silver extraction bowl. There was a Ziploc baggie that held all of the contents, a crumpled piece of paper, and a pair of cufflinks. She swallowed cufflinks? Probably what choked her to death. Do you know what cufflinks are? Oh, I was thinking handcuffs. <laughs> Fair. Vic number four, Jasmine Malone, TOD, 2.18 a.m. COD, strangulation. The bruises on the neck are consistent with a male hand. The grip size is 23 centimeters in length, he finished. Thanks, M, I said, and left. I walked down to Sarah's lab. Hey, can you help me with something, I asked. Do I get to kill Nick again? She smiled. I handed her the piece of paper. You need to tell me what this says, she replied. You bet, I returned. Oh my god, can Jen not read? I think, I mean, it's deteriorated because it was swallowed. I think Jen, Jen can't, can't read. read. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's why she's so angry. <laughs> She's illiterate. It's <laughs> just an inferiority complex. <laughs> okay, a spray of this, a dash of that, and a little shake of light, and here you go, she said triumphantly. I looked at the piece of paper. Nothing. I can't see anything, I complained. Sarah pointed to the computer. The piece of paper was a purpley color, and partially visible writing could be detected. Sarah hit a button, and the paper turned green, and the writing was completely visible. Dr. Bentz, 555-0078, 8 o'clock Monday. Good job, Sarah, I said and left. Bzz, bzz. My cell phone buzzed. Woods, I answered. Jen, we got a suspect, Nick responded. Who, I asked. What? Every single case. Every single one. Not a single one. We haven't had this issue. Is it a dead child? No. no last ep episode. Last episode, there weren't any dead children there were no dead children just a dead dog just a dead dog anyway well i was going back up to the dressing room because there was a trail of blood on the balcony and found a woman in there drenching the place with gas we're bringing her in now he returned how 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 did she get in there how did she sneak past everyone processing the fucking crime scene 
to to drench the place in gas. Here's the thing. Everyone else had gone home. Nick was like, hmm, I think I forgot something. Oh, yeah, the rest of my job. Went back alone and found her there. (laughs) All right. See you in 10, I said, and went to get a room for our charming little homicidal arsonist. I don't know why I'm assuming she's homicidal, but here we are. Everyone who kills someone is a serial killer. In your world. Also, but we have no proof that she's killed anyone, so she's not homicidal. No. Anyone who's killed someone is a serial killer. Anyone Uh who commits a crime is going to kill someone. Is homicidal and a psychopath, apparently. (laughs) Okay. Like, that's that's what 11-year-old Lex thought. Like, hey, if you break laws, you're the worst, and you have to be the worst person to want to do any bad things. I wish all cases could have the compulsive back to the... Oh, my God. I wish all cases could have the compulsive, back to the scene of the crime, drench the place in gas, suspicious type of killer. Jen, every single case has had that. Every single one (laughs) has had one of the guilty parties there (laughs) already. It's really convenient. (laughs) But it's not, because it takes them 200 years to get to a conclusion. (laughs) Like, Lenny Morrell was the bad guy, and then they let him go. Yeah. Because he had an alibi, I think. I he don't didn't. Remember. He didn't. He, they literally were interrogating him. Then the chick he then said was probably behind the whole thing was murdered. And they were just like, all right, get out of here. Damn it. Looks like we were wrong. Two people can't commit the same crime. <laughs> you were here, therefore. <laughs> um, that was literally it, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. All right. Jen, this is our suspect, Georgia Bentz. Georgia Bentz, this is my partner, Jen Woods, Nick introduced. Dr. Georgia Bentz, I asked. Yes, have you heard of my work? The doctor hissed. No, one of our victims had your name stuffed down her throat, I retorted. What, What kind of doctor are you? What a shame about Kiki. She was such a delightful girl, always doing what she's told, Dr. Bentz droned oh my god is she a hypnotist i don't know but i i have a bad feeling about what's gonna (laughs) happen next she's a goddamn hypnotist Um, okay all right i'm just gonna have to go with it ready okay how do you know we're talking about kiki nick asked benz opened her mouth but was silenced by her lawyer as your lawyer, I suggest... Her lawyer's there, too? <laughs> yep. She's the first person to have one, by the way. I like the idea that, like, when Jen walks in, it's just Nick and Dr. Benz. And then, as soon as she's about to talk, her lawyer comes up from underneath the table going, no, 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 don't say anything. As your lawyer, I suggest you stop, the nerdy lawyer advised. Yeah, fucking nerd. Shut up. They don't have anything on me, the woman sneered. You're right, but we will. That little arsonist attempt. That That's a huge thing they have on you. We caught you about to destroy a, a crime, crime scene. scene. Um, that little arsonist attempt and that piece of paper was enough for us to get a warrant for DNA samples. That You've means not talked to a single person about a warrant. You don't know. You don't know what Nick's been doing. He found this woman and has spent the last ten minutes bringing her back in. <laughs> That means hair, blood, and urine, Nick shot back. And semen. I'm a woman. (laughs) I still want it. Law enforcement, such a feeble-minded organization. You couldn't catch your own tails without almost getting someone killed. No matter what you do, there's... Listen, lady, we always catch our perp, and there's always a body count. (laughs) (laughs) Before we do, every time, there's never just one corpse. (laughs) More more people (laughs) die. One time, I stopped a hostage situation by sacrificing three cops. Oh, my God. Every single case is multiple bodies. One just, While they investigate. One just isn't interesting. But it is concerning that every time they have a case, multiple witnesses do drop dead. <laughs> that implies that they're really bad at their job. I know. Oh, my God. You're free to go and pay no attention to that red dot on your forehead. (laughs) Bang. Oh, Oh, Jesus. He's dead. How did that happen? There's nothing we could have done. Okay. Um, No matter what you do, there is still evil in the world, the doc continued. 
Well, aren't you a glass half full? Nick smirked. I put my gloves on and dug a needle into the suspect's forearm, and the thick red liquid filled the vial. Nick God, plucked you're a piece really of really into that blood. Blood. Nick plucked a piece of hair out of her scalp, and I handed her a specimen cup after patching up her arm. The lawyer exited the room. I'll run them to Sarah, I said, and walked out. Did this woman pee in this cup in this room? Yes. <laughs> in front of them. Implying that the lawyer had to stay and watch, too. And then he's like, all right, <laughs> all you're, right. All, you're all done like a big girl, and I then walked away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll run them to Sarah, I said, and walked out. Hey, I'm back. Run these, I ordered. You're the boss. She replied and thank, started. Thank you for thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true, but yes. She replied and she started to process. On my way out, I didn't feel too good. Oh, was that Pexky, uh Sorry. What am I called? Concussion. <laughs> is that pesky concussion just acting up again? <laughs> the hallways spun and my legs were as ductile as a Twizzler. Ductile? Yes. Look at you, big words. Thank you. I learned it in my uh, seventh grade science class. Seventh grade is 11 years old? Mm-hmm. 11 to 12. I always forget that I'm super young for my <laughs> grade. That is a brag. I was very <laughs> smart for my age. And very tall. I love it. <laughs> Jen, you okay? Nick asked after dropping off the urine. Why? Why was there separate... Maybe she didn't go in the interrogation room then. Maybe then. Maybe I did give myself the benefit of the doubt there. <laughs> yeah, just really tired, I replied. Hey, I'll wait for the results. You want me to drive you home? You had a pretty wild day, he offered. I was reluctant, but I was too tired to argue. You know, all that sleeping you're supposed to do with a concussion. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, there are a bunch of different reasons that this is bad. <laughs> Oh, Claire, she's doing this thing with the matching stuff from the FDA with volume or something, and I need to know the results. I mean, Dr. Crazy could have given Kiki the meds, or it may have been Jasmine. And what were we talking about again? I opposed. I'm taking you home. Don't worry, I can handle it. It's sort of my job, Nick smiled. We walked out into the parking lot and into the car. I fell asleep on the way home. Nick woke me up when the car came to a stop. She's going to have brain damage. <laughs> she just she, already, she already does have brain damage. Um, I keep getting knocked downstairs and falling off of high balconies. Hey, I thought I was going home, I said. Why? So you could just as easily hop in your car and continue the case? I don't think so, Nick replied. He walked me inside and sat me on the couch. We don't know where they are. We've not been given the location. <laughs> Kidnapping, Nick, huh? <laughs> yeah. As soon as the door closed, which is not nearly as bad as when Jen poisoned Nick, so... Please, drugged. <laughs> as soon as the door closed, I put on a blanket and my eyelids felt like they had anvils on them, so I went to sleep. So they ripped off? <laughs> <laughs> no, they were just very heavy. I know, but the way that you <laughs> phrased it is horrifying. Horrifying, I know. Um, a few hours later, Nick was sitting on the couch with me, shaking my shoulder. What? I asked groggily. We're done. The case is over now. Well, that's the last page. This is the second to last page. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, don't get my. I thought. I thought literally like the next sentence was the end. No. It's like, hey, guess what? I did it. <laughs> <laughs> dun dun dun. Uh, hey, I broke the case. <laughs> Thanks to a little bird. Oh, we're getting a, a battle of the five armies situation. What? Okay. So. What? So in the Hobbit. Okay. Rather than write the final battle. Tolkien basically just had Bilbo get hit on the head at the very beginning, and when he woke up, it was over. Yep. <laughs> and it's like, oh, what happened? Well, three of us died. Oh, my God. It gets worse. Oh, no. My eyes betrayed me, Connor. My eyes betrayed me. Is there sex? No. No. Care. All right. <gasps> what? What? Hey, I broke the case. Thanks to a little bird called Claire, he reported. Really? I asked, fully awake. Yeah, Dr. Bence was the mastermind behind it all. Oh, well, no, really? Well, after Sarah ran the DNA, she handed it off to Claire. Both of them found something very interesting. First, Sarah tested the blood, and it came back XY chromosomes, Nick began. 
What? Was it the doctors? She had male chromosomes? I inquired. Yeah. Five years ago, Dr. George Bence's license was pulled for unorthodox treatment on patients. He worked in a psych ward at St. Mark's Hospital in California. He picked specific patients with psychosis. They had been raped like he was... Raped? What? Jesus. They had been raped like he was when he was a boy, and he gave them different treatments and one medication to what? see the effects. What? How do they know that? What? <laughs> no. He thought he could cure them of the very fact that they were raped. Nick got up. Oh, and that is not something that needs to be. Cu- this is really. <laughs> this is really bad. There are so many bad things about this already. Nick got up and went into the kitchen, continuing the story as he went. Two of the five patients died, and one of them was. A m- Two of the five patients died, and one of them was the murderer. He moved out here and got the surgery three years ago. The surgery. The surgery. What? That, that took him from George to Georgia. Oh, you made a trans woman the... Also, yeah. you're implying that he did it because he's insane. This is really bad. I know. Although, in my defense, I had seen at least, at least four episodes of television with this exact same plot line already. Ooh, the early 2000s were a messy, <laughs> messy time for trans um, I... This is... This is not... That was the thing that was terrible, by the way. Not all the other terrible stuff. The terrible part was I saw that XY was bolded, and I went, Oh, no. So... <laughs> oh, no. Um, I'm uncomfortable now. Continue. When he was done forging a new license in papers, he got a job at the psych ward at St. Andrews, where okay. he met Kiki Malone. So it's a... It's a she now, but they're referring to him... Her. Well, here's the thing. I don't think I don't think that Bence made the transition because he's trans. he's trans. I think he made the transition so he could continue to practice medicine illegally. Illegally, and th- the best way to make that disguise happen is to not be a man anymore. You could have just gotten a new ID. That, or even just put on a wig. You did not have to get a surgery. <laughs> this is a. This, this is extreme. Is a, this is Ace Ventura levels of. Oh, this is Ace Ventura levels of extreme uh, revenge. Also, I like how people still like that movie and then forget about that being the twist ending. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's not great. It's it's not great. Every but everything else in the movie is like the performance delivered by everyone in there. Solid, except Courtney Cox. I. T- I forget she's in that movie sometimes. Anyway. Hey, another movie podcast. <laughs> yeah. That's also where Claire traced the meds back to. The rest of the medication was stolen from the hospital. Nick continued, waiting for the popcorn to finish popping. Did he start popcorn? Yes, Did he- I miss that in the middle of that horrible thing? Yes, he went to the kitchen while he was just casually telling her all of this. So, you know, trans people bad <laughs> now and... Uh, <laughs> She poured her heart out to the poor doc about how her twin was raped by a magician and how they raped her as well. The doc... Why was it phrased like that? Not they were both raped. It was first my sister and then me and then my sister and then me. (laughs) Kiki was crazy. It's fine. No, she was upset. (laughs) (laughs) The doc had then found his new subject and told Kiki to execute them. Jasmine found out and was going to report her, but Banana Hands strangled her. Who the fuck is Banana Hands? I want you to guess. I is, want you to oh guess. God, is it? I want you to guess. Is it Dr. Benz? It's Dr. Benz. That's not great. That's not great. I we had, can't put this episode out. I had <laughs> 11 year old Lex is still canceled. Um, I had heard Banana Hands before. It's in Shallow Hal. I don't know what that is. Shallow Hal is uh, the movie with Jack Black and Gwyneth Paltrow. The doc thinks she did nothing wrong, so he's all medicated. Okay, I'm actually just bouncing around with pronouns now. Yeah, you're... Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm right. The doc thinks that she did nothing wrong, I think, as in Kiki. Oh. It's not better, but I think that that's what... So he's all medicated in, pr- in the prison psych ward now. Nick finished depositing a bowl of delicious fluffy popcorn in front of us. Mmm, such a good thing to go with my transphobia and uh, just casual 
rape apology. I don't know what this is. It's, they're just so casually talking about all this rape. Wow, you lost me at XY, I joked. Yeah, I know how you feel. Claire lost me from the minute she ran me over. Okay, good night, Jen, he smiled and walked into his room. Good night, Nick, I replied and continued to sleep. It was a case well done. It wasn't. It Oh, God. Okay, so this reads like you got tired of writing this story and just like, I'm going to have Nick solve it. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, Tolkien did it. <laughs> you did this. You You opened that door. He did it. You opened that door. Because he didn't want to write about war. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it had nothing to do with the fact that he was lazy. Anyway, um, the glossary for Abracadabra. He's dead. Okay, you can't say that. But this, this entire thing has put a sour taste <laughs> in my mouth because of that ending. Uh, DB is dead body. Blood you, spray is a you, chem... You've done that before. You've done both of these before. Again, this was the second case. Oh, right. Uh, blood spray is a chemical mixture that identifies blood better than last time when it was antiseptic. Um, asphyxiation, a form of strangulation or suffocation. When the blood oxygen level drops below 16%, there's a rapid loss of consciousness and the person stops breathing. Wow, that was almost... Like, well-researched. Uh, no, that was just a direct quote from CSI. Okay. Uh, and XY is male. No, those are letters. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, yeah, so that was case four, Abracadabra, he's dead. And, um, yeah. I have a couple. Okay. I'm going to run through all of them. Okay. okay. I'm going to give that a C for canceled. <laughs> I'm going to give that a G for a glee. <laughs> and. No, no, I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to give that an L for let's not talk about this one ever again. <laughs> this was bad. Uh, this was bad. This is not great. Um, this one, I think. Probably the worst. The worst. It just, it made no sense. It's none. Zero sense. L- couldn't make less sense if it tried. Yeah. Oof. Anyway, thank you all again for tuning in for uh, Secrets Behind the Secrets. Uh, woof. I. Uh, woof. I came in with little energy, <laughs> and any I had was just sucked <laughs> out of me by that ending. Ah. <laughs> uh. Anyway, thank you so much again for joining us here on the A for Effort podcast. Don't forget, you're not good at something until you suck at it first. Sometimes you can really suck at it. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) All right. Goodbye.